Plastic was fine until it wasn't. I thought I could get away with 3D printing all my tool holders, and for a while, they worked great. But eventually, this happened. Split layers, broken hooks, clamps tearing the forks off. I hit the limit of what PLA can handle, and honestly, I'm done fighting it. There's a point where you stop tinkering with the wrong material, and you finally do it the right way. 3D printing is incredible for prototyping, but everything fails eventually. With PLA, it's usually layer adhesion and cantilever stress. Those forks on my clamp rack, they were basically mini cantilevers supported at one end, loaded at the other. Bad combination for a brittle material. Could I reorient the print? Sure. Do I want to spend hours reprinting the same parts hoping they won't snap again? Not even a little. When something fails in my shop, I either junk it, or I overreact and I build the next version like a tank. Guess which direction I went. I redesigned everything in sheet metal, laser cut, bent with a press break, powder coated, stupid strong. In this video I'll be designing the fixtures, sending them to Sincut Send, and converting part of my workbench to support my newer table saw with Unistrut. On this one, I'm not messing around. CAD intimidates people, but sheet metal is actually simple. You sketch a flat base, you add flanges, bend angles, make sure it can flatten into a real DXL for DWG, and you can send it to a shop like Send Cut Send. Now I'm using SolidWorks Maker, but Fusion, FreeCAD, Onshape, or your CAD of choice works fine too. I redesigned my plier bar, hammer bar, clamp rack, and caliper right angle holder, all the parts that failed in PLA. Same geometry, but steel where it counts. Most clamp racks you buy are 16 gauge metal, or about a 16th inch. Mine, almost double that, around an eighth. Actually 0.119 to be exact. Because if I'm going to redesign this thing, I want it bulletproof. With these parts ordered, let's move on to constructing the Unistrut support that I need for my new slash old cast iron table saw. Yes, this is another switch to using metal to get more serious here in the shop. One thing I loved about my workbench design last time is the table saw hanging off the end. It's easy to saw boards and use the workbench as an outfeed table for the cuts and place them right where I'll be working. It worked awesome. But I got this old Rockwell Delta belt driven version for free from a friend who wanted some more room in his garage. This saw is way better than the old King Feng Fu I had from my grandfather. The blade is square to the table and the table itself is made from cast iron. It's a definite upgrade. But I'm not going to trash the King Feng Fu. I'm going to share the love and give this to a friend who has no table saw at all. The maker community is nothing without helping each other out. As long as this saw will be used, I'll be happier than if it was in the trash anyway. The 2x4s I used to support the old saw I don't feel will be enough for the Rockwell saw, so I'm going to overkill again with some Unistrut. My idea is to create a 30-60-90 triangle out of brackets I ordered from McMaster Car. This will allow me to support the saw on the end of the bench without using a stand and it will be strong enough, I hope, not to sag. I'm essentially creating a cantilever beam with a 30 degree support. Time for a mini statics lesson. I talked about cantilevers before with a clamp rack. This design with the triangle will transfer the load into the workbench instead of straight down. If there is a vertical load of the saw at an unknown weight, the force will transfer down into the cantilever through the 30 degree angle and down into the wall of the bench. The vectors of force will hopefully be transferred to the vertical unistrut piece that I will attach to the bench with some half inch bolts. This should support the unknown weight of the saw. I'm going on intuition of both the structural support and the feel of the weight of the saw. Putting this on the end of my bench will consolidate my tooling in the shop once again and allow me to have some more room. Condensing is the name of the game in a small place like this. Since I got this Rockwell, I've been shoehorned in while making the bookshelf and other projects. Cutting the Unistrut was pretty simple with my old carbide tooth Makita saw. For now, let's just sit back and enjoy the process of making. Okay, now that I have these on, I build the triangles, which is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. They can slide up and down these rails to support, to support whatever I need, which in this case is my table saw, which is old and heavy. <laughs> Beefy. 
I could cut the 60 degree angle on this, but not the 30. The 30 I had to guess with using the bracketry as a template and just cut with my angle grinder. They wound up being less accurate than I hoped, but it will work and not completely look terrible. Getting this thing mounted and getting it to the right height was really not too terrible at all. But the thing I was really dreading was actually lifting the whole table saw off of its stand and onto this. First I wanted to get rid of some extra weight by taking the motor off. I didn't know exactly where to put it. After getting the saw mounted, things look pretty good, but it is definitely sagging a bit where the saw isn't parallel to the workbench. I had an interesting idea also applying statics to bring this up and square with tension rods by running two three quarter inch rods with holes for about three eighths all thread to go through. I can support it in the upper direction and be able to adjust the whole assembly until square like a turnbuckle. Death. This is sort of reminiscent of bridge structures with cables supporting from above while there are supports below as well. The real question here is, would Brandon from Inheritance Machining be proud? If you've ever tried to drill a three quarter inch hole in sheet metal, you know the pain I've been through. I had a reduced shank drill that could fit in my drill chuck, but neither the drill nor the bit wanted to cooperate. I tried my best at freehand sharpening and although it cut better, it tried to bust some knuckles too. Enter the Unibit. Getting one of these made drilling nice round holes in sheet metal so much easier. I think the remaining six holes were done in the same time it took me to drill two. Now it was time for final assembly to cinch up my cantilever problem. The ratchet sound and the level straightening out was so satisfying. The day had come that I was totally looking for, and I wanted to see if these things would work, and maybe look cool. I'm ready to make this shop look worthy of making anything you can desire. I want to be able to walk in here and be inspired to make anything, anything my crazy imagination can come up with. And boy, they did not disappoint. All these parts look amazing. The accuracy of the bins, the powder coat, all of it looks great. Now it's just time to see if these will actually work in practice. All this started with a question I couldn't ignore. Could this be an actual product? That's a question I'm gonna answer in the real world and I'm gonna bring you along for it because as a maker and an artist, I've tried this before. Not necessarily with tooling storage, mind you, but other things. Most ideas failed. Some worked, but not well enough to justify the effort. And that's just the truth. With these mounted on the bench, I'm paying attention to what frustrates me on day-to-day -day operations here in the shop. I tried the cheap route first. I tried plastic with 3D printing. It didn't work. The prints cracked, the heavy tools slowly won, sometimes more quickly. So instead of pretending it was good enough, I scrapped it and redesigned the whole system using the material that should have been there in the first place, steel. These are laser cut, press break form steel organizers. Every one of them is built on one idea. Do it once, do it right, and forget about it. Tight tolerances, rigid structure, designed for shop abuse. Mallets, clamps, pliers, measuring tools, the stuff that destroys plastic and even thinner sheet metal organizers over time. To make this system truly modular, I'm using 45 millimeter extruded aluminum, like I did before. And I know nobody likes being asked to buy one more thing, but if you break it down and segment it, it's actually cheaper than you think. Some links are around 30 bucks a piece, just for a length to house a clamp like this or for four foot or longer. But the reason is simple. The extrusions give you real configurability. I've mentioned it before, but this stuff is used in the real world in manufacturing plants all over the place. You can move things, add to it later, and change your whole configuration without tearing up your walls or anything like that at all. If you already run extrusion in your shop, this drops right in. If you don't, 
Every organizer still has standard mounting holes. You can screw them straight to studs, a French cleat, or whatever system you are to use. The extrusion isn't mandatory. It's there to give you maximum flexibility. I'm even considering bare steel versions for welders so they can tack them to their tables or their truck beds. And I'm not trying to compete at the bargain end of the market. These cost more to make. Steel costs more. And precision forming takes real engineering. But the trade-off is simple. You buy it once, you set it up the way you want, and then you're done with it. If you want to support the channel and get something that won't crack, sag, or box you into one organizational type, then the link is below. Thank you guys very much. If you have any feedback on these, I'd love to hear it. If you have suggestions for organizer types and maybe even suggestions for making these better, leave them in the comments and we'll have a conversation about it. I'd love to talk with everybody about their shop ideas. Thank you everyone and thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And thanks for watching the channel, keeping along with everything that I'm doing. And I'm sorry that this was a kind of a rehash of organizing because there's really not a whole lot more progress on the bench. I really had to retread on this and I'm not excited about it, but it was something that needed to be done. Next video for this workbench, maybe not my next video in general, I'll, I'll hopefully be working on the drawers themselves and other storage within the workbench and some wiring for all this kind of stuff, maybe with some dust collection. And check it out in the spring, hopefully. I've had a terrible day, thanks largely to you. What, what, what is this building? First you're my friend, now you turn a 360 on me. God, 180, you stupid spaghetti slurping cretin, 180. If I did a 360, I'd go completely around and end up back where I started. What? Trust me. <laughs>